Okay, so Motorola finally dropped the Razer comeback because nostalgia. And what does it tell us about the future of foldable devices? It's not that bright. It's pretty dim. It's probably dimmer than the Pixel 4 screen. But the amount people will tolerate for the sake of a hinge, for the sake of a display, not staying flat is what just amazes people to the point that they will just compliment and flatter any product, no matter what it is. So that's what we're talking about in today. Diving into the specs now that it's official and my extremely opinionated and biased thoughts on them. Let's begin. So in case you guys remember last year when everyone was hating on the iPhone XR because it wasn't a 1080p display, well, maybe people would have liked the XR more if it just happened to fold in half. What does that allow for? I don't know. It just it just folds in half. At the end of the day, that's that's my main argument I still don't get. It's like, it still goes in your pocket. It's just folded up now. It doesn't really add much. It's just taking up less room in your pocket? Are you putting other things in your pocket with your phone and the giant phone is taking up too much space? I don't know. It's not even that big a screen. You know, I could follow the argument with the Galaxy Fold that had its own assortment of problems, but bigger screen, folds up, fits in the pocket. I get the concept. With this, I am completely lost. It's like you're just betting on nostalgia factor alone, but that didn't save Sony when they tried to re-release the Walkman a couple of years ago. Yeah, that happened, by the way. The Walkman! Everybody remembers the Walkman. There's a new Walkman now, and it's really expensive. Y'all should buy it. No, that doesn't work. That's something you put in a museum and be like, Look what we made! <laughs> buy it please and then no one buys it that's exactly how i see the motorola razor it's like yeah that time is gone now we have phones with bigger screens than 6.2 inches especially the galaxy s11 which is going to have a screen size of about four light years now that we've seen the actual specifications it's rocking a 2500 milliamp hour battery oh that's like for 2019 that's bad i mean i thought the pixel 4 battery was small but now they're putting two screens on this thing so you can use it in i don't know like smartwatch looking mode where this thing is tiny and barely usable you're gonna put two screens on a device but pack 2500 milliamp hours in it Ugh. and that's that's on like an over six inch display but don't worry it's rocking the snapdragon 710 which is used more on mid-range smartphones it's not even the latest or best snapdragon chip you can get not saying that the 710 is a horrible CPU, it's just when you look at how it performs compared to the 800 series and then you look at how much this phone costs, you really start to realize how much you're paying for just the folding part. By the way, the screen resolution of this thing is sub 1080p. Obviously, it's a very weird aspect ratio, so it's kind of difficult to argue that, but if you do the math on how many pixels are on a 1080p display, which is a little over 2 million, and you do the math of the resolution of this new Razer flip phone, it's sub 2 million. So all y'all complaining about about the low pixel density of the 10R and the iPhone 11. Divert your attention to this now because it's 1500 bucks without even 1080p. But it folds, so it's okay, sorry. I forgot about that. As soon as there's a hinge on something, we immediately forgive it of all poor choices. Not to mention we got the crimson chin on the front with a very awkward looking fingerprint reader. Why can't you just make it a circle? You know, on Samsung phones, they had to make it long like that because of the screen. But on this, it's just long and short for no reason. It's 128 gigs of storage which is fine, but there's also no upgraded tier and there's also no expandable storage. So I hope you're happy with 128 gig because that's all you're going to get. It's also shipping with Android 9, so not the latest version of Android. And they said it's coming in January, which <laughs> I, I kind of believe it's coming in January as much as the air power is coming in January. As in, more than likely, this thing is going to see some sort of delay or when they launch it, they're going to say it's actually in limited quantities or we're only going to launch it in one country that has a significant smaller population that way we don't have to ship as many of them and I'm sure the first couple weeks of people actually buying and using this thing there's gonna be display problems that's the funniest thing I've noticed about so many youtubers talking about the Motorola Razr is saying like how much better this is than the Galaxy Fold despite destroying the whole argument they all had for foldables this is great because we can have bigger screens in our pockets then a foldable phone comes out with a smaller screen than a lot of our phones already and everyone's like oh this is better that's the way to do it? Why? Why is it better? We already have that. The only thing you're buying is the folded up mode. Literally, imagine if this phone launched without the folding part. No one would give a crap, even if it was half the price. Even if this thing was $750, y'all would all see those specifications and go, wow, that's a joke. No one should buy that. That's terrible. But then as soon as you advertise the, but it does the clappy thing, everyone immediately is like, whoa, this is the future. This is where tech is going. Nostalgia. That's why people will buy this. I guarantee you, outside of the tech community, with 
everyday consumers, the conversation's gonna go a little bit like this. Oh, that's kind of cool. I had a flip phone that used to do that. Yeah, isn't it neat? Don't you like the way it folds and all that? Yeah, that's kind of neat. How much is it? Oh, uh, well, it starts at $1,500. Yeah, nope, thanks. I'm done. I'm perfectly happy with any phone that's made of glass from the past four years. As much as you guys love to complain that, well, there are some iPhones and some Androids that go up to $1,500, so it's good. See, they're getting cheaper. What you basically proved is that you can make one of the worst specced out phones we've ever seen this year with its tiny battery, incredibly low resolution, average CPU, and only one camera? That camera doesn't even have optical image stabilization? Yeah, that notch on the inside, it's just for the earpiece. There's literally, like, you can't use the camera when unfolded for selfies, I guess, but you've just proven that people will go gaga over a foldable no matter how bad the specs is. That's the real question I'm asking you. Can there be a foldable phone with bad specs that people will actually admit, okay, that's not very good, maybe this isn't worth it. Hopefully most of you can agree that at minimum we should just admit this isn't ready yet. I personally don't believe foldables are the future, but I could be wrong. And no, I would not defend Apple if they released this thing. If you watch my videos, you know how much I don't defend Apple on a lot of things. That's besides the point though. Remember guys, technology only gets cheaper when there's lots of people buying into it. When you're selling a $1,500 nostalgia present, there's not a lot of people buying into it. Samsung's not making a lot off the Galaxy Fold, and I can guarantee you Motorola's not gonna make a lot of money off this thing. So no, the tech doesn't just magically get better with time, and I think objectively, in many departments, this is a worse implementation than the Galaxy Fold. Despite all those issues we had with the Fold's durability, none of them were really addressed with the Razer. It's just like, yeah, we also have those issues. It's a plastic display. Don't press your fingernail on it likely too hard, otherwise it could be permanently damaged and near impossible to fix. Please think a little bit. The fact that it folds in itself is not a feature. The fold can enable other features, but this has none of that. Aside from the mediocre specs, the only thing you're buying into is the mini version. The fact that you can wrap it up into a slightly smaller phone. No people with short shorts aren't gonna buy it. Please stop. Let me know what you think of the Moto Razor by hitting me up over on Twitter, joining our Discord, or don't. I don't really care what you do. Just don't buy the Moto Razor. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.